want to welcome everyone today, those who are our visitors and those who have uh, been here a time, and those who have returned uh, after being gone for a time, everyone who are in this church, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Be welcome. Let's uh, call one another to worship. In God we live and move and have our being. God our faithfulness in our <coughs> We reach out to others with the same kind of love with which God has touched our lives. Come on, let us worship the Lord who is always with us. Together let us praise God who walks daily by our side. Amen. steadfast love of God never ends. May we love God as God loves us. Jesus commanded his disciples to love one another as he has loved us. May we love our neighbors as ourselves. When we find ways to love God and all people and at all that God has created, there will be peace. May the peace of God be known in the world through our love. The peace of God be with you. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another.
may be seated. Would the boys and uh, would the kids come forward? Glad you came up. I I see that. Be kind. Nice. Um. Any of you going to go trick or treating? Anybody? You're not going. Hunter, you're not going. Um, oh, now, uh, Nikolai, what are you going to be with trick or treating? Do we know? What? What you gonna be? A fire chief. chief. Oh, I'm gonna be your chaplain. Okay. What else? Who? uh, Risa, you got gonna dress up? Yeah. What are you gonna dress up as? Brandover Spider-Man. Brandover Spider-Man. Yeah, like I I got run over. Like a run over Spider-Man splat. Okay, got it. Okay, splat. My grandma's going like, huh? <laughs> Dimitri, are I'll you gonna go? I had my grandpa with it last night. I had, it all, I had my, all my makeup on. Uh, what? Uh, like toilet paper and do a mummy. You're gonna be a mummy? Okay, toilet paper. I've done it as a sheet. Okay, how, how are you? A ninja. A ninja? Okay, what about you? A rat. A rat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From um, Dimitri. A short mustache with a you know, rat. Uh, you know, do, do you want a do you want a funny story? Sorry. Pastor Jacoba once was the caregiver, the the substitute caregiver for rats. <laughs> really, I did that. I did not touch them. Okay, so what are you gonna be? Ghost face. What? Ghost face from Scream. Ghost face from Scream. All right. So, you know, you know tomorrow you're going to be, or Tuesday, you're going to be something else, right? I'm asking, uh, hey, sit down. I, I'm asking, who are you today? Oh. Now, oh, I wanted to know who you were going to be, but who are you today? Um. What? You're Spider-Man today? Okay. I'm Ghostface. I'm not Ghostface. Okay, okay. Dimitri, who are you today? I'm You're Dimitri. Oh, you're Reese? No, I'm Spider-Man. And you're, you're Nikolai? Yeah. And you're, you're Alice? And you're Eleanor? And you're Hunter? And I'm Ghostface. And, and you know what? You are all beloved children, God's beloved children. And, and you are neighbors to everyone everyone else. And God has invited us to love our neighbors. So when you're out trick-or-treating this week, Hunter, when you're out trick-or-treating this week, can you be good neighbors too? Can you be loving neighbors? Can you be even loving to your brothers and sisters? Yeah? Sharing? You know, if anybody, if I don't want any Mounds candy bar. Maybe if you don't like something, you can give it away too. (laughs) But even give away your favorites. Reese's. For me. No, I'm not not, not, giving away. You're not giving away. Okay, okay. Huh? Almond Joy. Almond Joy, that's that's the one I really don't like either. (laughs) Okay. Sweet tarts, you don't like sweet tarts? Okay. Okay, how about if we pray? Okay, Okay. let's pray. Dear God, we pray that everybody will be good neighbors this week and that as kids go out trick-or-treating that they will all be safe. And we pray, God, that they will enjoy the night and that they will be good neighbors too. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. You may return to your seats. Jana, let me take a moment. So this is a, an interesting text, and one of the things that's interesting is it says, do not be partial to the poor, or deferential, do not be deferential to the poor, or partial to the rich. Um, combination. And then it says that we are all called to be fair to one another. 
And I think that's the piece that we need to hear, but that we need to also remember that, that we're all God's children, the poor and the rich. And that, that was just caught my eyes when I, I read that text. Sounds like it caught yours too. Okay, Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 19, it's verse one and two, and then we skip to verse 15 through 18. If you do want to find it in your pew Bible, it's on page 105 and 106, but I'm reading from the common English Bible. The Lord said to Moses, say to the whole community of Israelites, you must be holy because I, the Lord, your God, am holy. You must not act unjustly in a legal case do not show favoritism to the poor or deference to the great. You must judge your fellow Israelite fairly. Do not go around slandering your people. Do not stand while your neighbor's blood is shed. I am the Lord. You must not hate your fellow Israelites in your heart. Rebu rebuke your fellow Israelites strongly so you don't become responsible for his sin. You must not take revenge nor hold a grudge against any of your people. Instead, you must love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Thank you. And I'm going to read from the Gospel of Matthew again. And this text is... Um, follows the one on the question of the resurrection. Now, last week we, we heard about the coin, um, you know, who gives, are, are we to give the coin that's got Caesar's, who, you know, are you to give the temple tax? It had to do with that one. Give to therefore to the temp, uh, emperor what belongs to the emperor and what to God what things belong to God. Then there's a whole section here about the question of the resurrection um, and who's, who's, Whose um, wife will someone be when the s one brother after another dies? And who's, who, in the resurrection, who, who will be the, uh, who will they see as the, the real husband? Well, Jesus answers that question with an interesting question. I just caught this out of the corner of my eye today. Um, and it says, I am the God... Um, as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was said to you by God? I am the God of Abraham, the God of uh, Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is the God, not of the dead, but of the living. And when the crowds heard it, they were astounded by his teachings. We might go like, what's that mean? But I want to remind us that in the Jewish faith, God, um, the Abraham, Isaac, and those who have died are still alive and among the people. So God is the God of the living, not of the dead. That means that we're all still alive, and that's how the Jewish people see um, their brothers and sisters. One of the terrible things I saw this week on the news was that in the Jewish faith, they needed all of the parts of somebody who had been killed. And they were even scraping walls to do that. They are the living. Even though they've died, they are still among them. Now today, We've got another test. When the Pharisees, I'm reading from um, Matthew 22, verses 34 to 40, no, 46. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test Jesus. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind. 
This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, well, the son of David. And Jesus said to them, how is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. And David thus calls him Lord. How can he be his son? You know, because a father would not call their son Lord. A son would call their father Lord. So how can it be that David calls him Lord and that he is now his son, that he is his son? No one was able to give Jesus an answer about this question, nor that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Will you pray with me? Pray that the words that I speak are faithful to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that that which you hear is that which the Spirit intends for your ears this day. Let us pray. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is again put to the, to the test. This time it's the Pharisees who have gathered, knowing that Jesus has already sidestepped their, his, their other questions. They're sending a lawyer. They're sending a lawyer to ask the question. Um, and when Jesus answered their questions, their challenges, he was able to sidestep them with words that spoke the truth. You know, um, you give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar, unto God what belongs to God. God is the, uh, the, the, the God of the living. Um, and when Jesus spoke the truth, he really didn't give the the, the Jewish leaders an opportunity to say, ha, we got him now. They just couldn't do that. The, Jesus answered in such a way that they couldn't get him. So now, as I said, these disciples, the Pharisees gather together and, and they send a lawyer who, who knows well the 613 laws of the Jewish tradition. And the lawyer asks the question, not to gain eternal life or even to learn how to interpret the law. The lawyer asks the question to test Jesus. What's the greatest law? You know, there's 613 of them. Which is the most important? Jesus answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love the Lord, uh, your neighbor, as yourself. You know, that puts all of the 613 uh, laws into a good system. Now, there's the laws about loving God, and there's the laws about loving neighbor, and they're all kind of divide in that. Jesus has just summarized what the law is. And we've memorized these words. We know them well. Uh, the Pharisees didn't know what to say. They didn't ask, how do we love God? Uh, they didn't ask, who is our neighbor? Remember, the, 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 that was the question in, in Luke. Who is our neighbor? Jesus had already answered those questions by the way he lived his life and taught. And especially he taught in Matthew 5, 
verses 21 to 48. Write that down, because I think that next, you know, this afternoon you need to read it. Matthew 5, verses 21 to 48. It's the Sermon on the Mount. When people tell me they just love the Sermon on the Mount, I try not to roll my eyes. The truth is, most of us would rather read Luke than Matthew. Matthew's, or Luke's got those stories about, you know, if, 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 if there's the one that, that Lillian preached, um, if someone falls and is, you know, beaten up and is on the side of the road, you know, the Samaritan comes and, and saves them. And, you know, I don't know, if, it doesn't matter if you're the, the Samaritan or you're the person on the road, it's good news because either way you're saved and you have eternal life, you know. It, um, that's just... That's a good story, isn't it? Um, then there's the story in, in Luke about the, the prodigal son who goes off and he, he sins against his father. He, he, he has taken the money and he squandered it all. And, but his father is waiting, waiting for him to come back. And when he comes back, he doesn't chastise him. He puts a, a golden ring on him and puts on the finest robe and... and, and kills the fatted calf, has a big party. And isn't that good news if we've turned away from God? You know, God's waiting for us to return. Hallelujah. Good news, Luke. Thank you, Luke. Yeah. And Luke also says, from the cross to the thief, um, the, the thief that's uh, on the cross beside him, Today you will be with me in paradise. Good news! Right? Luke. Yeah, most of us like Luke better than Matthew. In Matthew, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says if you're angry with your brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult your brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. Now, your parents can remind us of that, remind the kids. And remember that part of the Sermon on the Mount that G Jimmy Carter confessed? Remember that one? You know, about looking at a woman with your heart? Yeah. The Pharisees already knew what, what Jesus w meant when he said, love your neighbor as yourself. I mean... It's hard stuff, and I haven't even gotten to the part where it says, pray for, pray for those who persecute you and love your enemies. I mean, that's Matthew, that's Sermon on the Mountain. That's what Jesus means when he says, love your enemy. They put Jesus to the test. However, when Jesus says those words that roll off our tongues and off the tongues of our Jewish friends, even our present-day Jewish leadership, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and your, your soul. You shall love your neighbor as a, yourselves. We know, they know that we got a gotcha. We done been got. You know? It's a gotcha. Yeah. Loving our neighbor is hard. It's hard work. And to add to that, that, we, that the way we love God is to love our neighbor. The Pharisees thought they put Jesus to the test. When in reality, Jesus put them to the test. And all of his followers, us included. Yeah. Jesus isn't finished with the Pharisees yet. He has another question for them. Actually, this is the first question he asked them. What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? They knew the answer, they knew the historical answer. The promised Messiah would be the son of the king of King David. God had promised that way back in 2 Samuel 7. However, to say that the Messiah was the son of God, David was not a complete answer. And the people who were listening besides the Pharisees knew that. And so Jesus 
asks him some questions about David, and you know, as you heard about, you know, who is the Lord, and David says, Lord, and, and Matthew's Jesus is going on to say it, that the Messiah was the Son of God, was and is. And the followers of Jesus, they'd already figured that out, but the Pharisees, not so much, and, and they knew that if they continued that argument with Jesus, they were going to be in trouble with the followers of Jesus, who were getting to be a bit sizable right now. They didn't want to mess with them either. Jesus asked an identity question, who is the Messiah? Of course, for Christians, Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Christ, God's anointed one. Does the question, who is the Messiah, speaks not only to Jesus' identity, but also to ours and to the churches? If we say that Jesus is the Son of God, God is holy, and we say God is holy, and God is to be loved with all our heart, soul, and mind, doesn't that also say that this is what we're to do. We're to love God. We're to, because God is holy. And if we're to love God as holy, if God, Jesus is God's son, then we must love Jesus. And if Jesus says we must love our neighbor as ourselves and that the way to show that we love God is to love our neighbor as ourselves, doesn't that all say something about who we are to be? Doesn't that speak to our identity? Doesn't that put us to the test as individuals and as a church? Uh, Carolyn and I were at a meeting yesterday and we heard a, a speaker who was quite good and, and she asked us to, to think about what is the purpose of our church and I, the way I sometimes say that question is what, 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 you know, she says, what's the legacy of your church? And um, if something happened to the church and it closed, what, what would the community still remember? What would the community say about us? And I've told you before that my hometown church, LaPorte, Indiana, St. Paul, I love that church. It was where I was baptized and confirmed. It was a beautiful building. Beautiful people, I thought. But the pastor's son, who was also a pastor, wrote a history of the book, of the church. And he said, you know, he said it to me, you know, when I think about what was the legacy of St. Paul, UCC, and Laporte, it was their fish fry. It was their fish fries. That's what the congregate, that's what the community was going to miss about that church. This week we had our harvest dinner. And um, there was somebody who really thought that they were going to come into the building. They really wanted to come into the building. They wanted community very, very much. And when I looked in the car and I knew I, I knew I had to stand and just talk with them and talk with them, when I looked in the car, the gentleman in the back seat was just shaking like this. And they were, you know, you know they had they'd not gone back to church, um, their church, because they didn't feel safe, but they, they probably knew that we really worked on safety and that our church was, was pretty strict about how we came back from COVID. They may have known that, and so they trusted us. And they wanted a cup of coffee. That's all they wanted was a cup of coffee. And I'm going like, he's in the back seat shaking <laughs> and driving or riding in the back seat. So I talked with them, spent some time with them to show them the community love. But, you know, I got to tell you, 
Reese is really the one that showed the community, the church's love. Reese, as I'm walking, uh, as I'm on one side of the window in the car, talking to them and t- talking to people, and not only them but a number of people, and I'm standing, sitting on one side of the car, just having a conversation, telling people we're glad they came. Reese re- comes out with a with a, the, the meals. And let's see. I think you said, "Thank you for coming. I hope you had, uh, you have a enjoy the meal." and have a nice evening. Wow. Thank you, Reese. That was just great. That's who we want to be. That's who we want to be. This week we're having a new euchre party, and that I, I can just see the headline. Livingston Daily Press. Church has euchre party. Last time it was the, the pastor of the church who took the prize. They, they have a pastor who's a card shark. She must be a plant. I mean, it just doesn't look good for the pastor to win. Now, if I, if I go this week, and I probably am going to, because I like playing euchre. Um, if I go this week and I'm going to, uh, and I throw the game because I don't want to be the one who wins, you know, that's going to hurt my partners, right? I can't do that. I can't win, but I can't throw the game either. I need to be a good neighbor. I need to figure out how I'm going to be that good neighbor, and that good neighbor is going to have to be visiting with folk and playing a good game and making sure that if I win, somebody else gets the prize. And senior deacon, I mean, come on. It was the pastor one, one evening and the senior deacon the other. What a th- way to show hospitality. <laughs> we are called to be the church. How are we going to be the church? What is our purpose? What do we want to see, have the community know about us? We can't just have the sign on the, on the door. We need to be out in the community. And so when that Christmas tree shows up and we're decorating that tree, and I think it's going to have some rainbow ribbons and some rainbow um, ornaments, we also have to be there a bit. We have to, to show our hospitality, our care. We need to be there. We need to love our neighbor and let them know. We need to watch how we love each other in this place because, my friends, there are people who are watching. The community knows who we are. They're watching. They're watching how we get along with each other. They're watching. Love your neighbor as yourself. That is our task, inside and outside the building. One of the things that the speaker says is, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to um, um, gloat or, uh, but put yourself out there, but. We cannot hide ourselves. Is that kind of what she said? We cannot remain hidden. I was a little concerned about the, the rec uh, uh, um, building coming, or the, the program coming in behind us. But our building will be seen. More people are going to be driving by this, this area with kids. At the same time, they need to see us. They need to see us and to know us as people who care and love the Lord. That's what we're to be about. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Help us to see how you love so that we might love also. Amen. Amen.
Let us take time for quiet prayer. O oh God, our oh God, the people of your book are fighting. Jew, Muslim, and Christian, all in harm's way. God, we'd like to ask for peace, but we know that it's going to be more than our asking for peace. We ask for a miracle, Lord. We ask for a miracle that there might be a, a ceasefire of some sort. We pray for our, the hostages. We pray for those who are grieving. We pray, God, that there is no escalation, only de-escalation. God, we pray for a miracle. And God, we pray, too, for miracles 
when it appears that there is no way through for any of us. We pray for miracles when, when people feel like they are not welcome. We pray for miracles when people feel that their color prohibits them from having that which they need for life. We pray for miracles, O oh God, when there is illness and it seems that it's only going to get worse until that time of death, which for some will be good news. Oh God, we pray for miracles for families who are in disarray. We pray for miracles for those who are unjustly imprisoned. We pray for miracles, oh God, because it's going to take a miracle. It's going to take you helping to, us to intervene in the world. God, show us what we need to see. Show us what we must do. Help us to love you. Help us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Help us to set up aside greed and anger and hurt. Help us to set aside brokenness. God, help us to work for reconciliation and to bring hope to the hopeless. Help us to bring healing, if not of body, then of soul and spirit. Help us, O oh God, so that miracles might abound. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray this, and as Jesus taught us, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I'm glad to report that I did not see people reading the annual report, the reports during church. Just glad to report that. But you will see in the treasurer's report that there are um, a number of things that are offering supports. You will see that. And how our offering makes possible that we are able to be in this place and serve the Lord in this place. Our offering, we were told yesterday, our treasurer's report is a moral document. It says who we are. It says what our priorities are. Let us look at that. And let us look each to ourselves, how we serve the Lord. Amen. Let us give according to our abilities.
Let us pray together. As we give ourselves and our offerings, we pray, O oh God, that they may reveal your love in such a way that many will respond. Awaken in us a love for you and for one another that is contagious. Remove from us all apathy, pretension, and greed, that we may grow in holiness and compassion, living joyously in communion with you. Amen. Lord, I want to be a Christian, number 457. Muslim. God never said it was going to be easy to be like Jesus. And yet that's what we're called to do and be. God never said it was going to be easy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remain with you always, knowing that even though it's not easy, God goes with us. Parishioners said, used to say to me, go with God and God will surely go with you. <laughs> <laughs> 